Hello everyone, hope you're having a great afternoon. I want to welcome you to our midweek prayer time and Bible study. Appreciate your faithfulness to attend these online services again. Boy, we'd love to be back together, um, but until then, until the Lord sees fit for us to come back together, we're grateful that we have this technology that we can stay uh, connected. In the way of announcements, I do um, want to say that this Sunday we will again be online. Um, I'm praying and hoping that sooner than later uh, we will be able to slowly um, come back together uh, again. When that happens, you will uh, be notified. There will be no um, guesswork about it and the the way that it will happen is is that we will when we when we do start to come back together it's going to be it's going to be again a slow process and there'll be a um, kind of a phase one phase two phase three kind of idea so that we slowly um, work ourselves back to more of a normal uh, type church experience so church family um, just really pray that the Lord will give us wisdom on his perfect timing on when he wants that uh, to happen. And again, I wish I could give you a specific date now, um, but hopefully that will happen soon. So as we, as we progress in that, we will make that uh, known to you. So again, I, thank you so much. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate your patience and your prayer and your continued support. It's such a, such a blessing to be a part of a, a wonderful church family. And then for those of you who are joining us who maybe you're not a part of First Baptist Church, but you've been watching our online services, thank you so much for your, for your faithfulness just to be a part of our online family. And I hope that you've been blessed by our services. So again, Sunday, we'll be back online. We'll have a service at 11 o'clock a.m., That'll be live on Facebook, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, join us. Then we'll have a Sunday evening service, 6.30, or excuse me, 6 o'clock on Facebook Live. All these services are being recorded. Most of you know this, but just in case you don't, they are being recorded. And if you go to our church face, or excuse me, our church website, um, you, can, you can go to the top. There's a tab that says Sermons. You can click on that, and you can... Uh, view the uh, sermons at your own um, convenience. So yes, blessing to be here tonight. Praise the Lord for his faithfulness and his goodness. And um, just want to mention some prayer requests that uh, we want to be praying uh, about as we've been praying. We want to continue to pray for Miss Lee Scott, uh, who's having her chemo treatments. And so far those treatments are going good. So I appreciate your continued prayers for Miss uh, Lee. Also, uh, Lisa Morris's aunt and uncle, Gwen and Buster Hurley, we want to um, be sure and pray for them. Uh, I believe I, I may have mentioned last week that Mr. Buster is home, and uh, Miss Gwen, praise the Lord, is, is doing better. She's, she's not home yet. She still has a long ways to go, but showing uh, positive um, signs that she is um, starting, to, starting to move forward. Out of this uh, virus so thank you for continuing to pray for miss gwen um want to pray for perry price's cousin i've mentioned her before it's twyla true love she's battling cancer so please pray for her mike andler had to go into the hospital this week down in tallahassee he had been running fever uh, for several days he went to the hospital here in donaldsonville last week was tested for both the flu and the coronavirus and tested negative for both of those, but still continued to have um, that fever. So uh, I believe it was yesterday, yes, or the or day before yesterday, he uh, went to the hospital in Tallahassee and they've run all kinds of tests and they think that they have uh, figured out what's going on. They think that he has some kind of bacterial infection in his heart. Uh, so they're continuing to run a uh, test on him to figure out the, the treatment. So can, I just appreciate on Mike's behalf you, you praying for, 
for Mike because he's been through a lot, recently had a surgery on his sinuses and then had um, still having back problems and now this. So pray for uh, Mike. Uh, Wayne Shadows mentioned him a couple times in our Wednesday night prayer time. He is in the hospital in Dothan with this infection in his uh, knee. They've had to do surgery again, pretty extensive surgery, and so appreciate your prayers for Wayne Shadows. Also, Kevin Long, last Wednesday night, I mentioned he was having to go to the hospital with, uh, with chest pains, but uh, they got good news that he was not having a heart attack. It's... Uh, some things that, that they were already aware about as far as a condition that uh, he's gonna have to have a uh, procedure, but the doctor um, gave him some good news. So continue to pray for uh, Kevin and for that uh, surgery that he needs to have. Hopefully that will happen soon. Pray for Mr. Larry Harrell as he's uh, scheduled to have uh, surgery at Emory. Um, also, my sister was diagnosed uh, almost two weeks ago with coronavirus. She lives up in Blairsville. She works in the hospital up there. Praise the Lord, she's doing so much better, and she actually was retested um, yesterday, no, the day before yesterday, and was supposed to get the results today. So hopefully she'll be able to go back to, to work. And uh, again, so many of you ask about her. Thank you so much for praying for my sister, Kim. We want to pray for the family of Zachary Mills. He's a 17-year-old man. Uh, who passed away, lived down in Tallahassee. He was the grandson of uh, John Ray and Carolyn Stout. And so some of you may may know them. And so we want to pray for that uh, family. Also, we are praying, as, as we have been mentioning every, every time, we're praying for our medical community, doctors and our nurses, and continue to pray for them. We want to pray for those who are working on the front lines, um, those essential workers, pray for their protection. We, we want to um, pray for President Trump, our governor, Brian Kemp, and all of our leaders that they will, um, that they will not be politically motivated through the decisions that they make, that they will have wisdom from above as they make decisions and that the decisions that they make will be uh, for the betterment of the people. And uh, as we pray for them, we also pray that as God's people, we would um, not be ones who are known for complaining and, and rebelling against our leadership. We, we just want to be faithful to pray for them that they will, they will be guided um, by, the, by the Lord. And then finally, as we... Every, every Wednesday night, I always emphasize the most important need, and that is spiritual needs. For, for those who are saved, but maybe they're just struggling in their walk with the Lord, as believers, um, we know that we are all in a process of growing to become more like Christ. We all stumble. The Bible says we all stumble in many ways. And so um, we, we want to pray for God's refinement in all of our lives that he will give us a hunger and a passion for him, that we will every day intentionally wake up um, by his strength, determined to walk according to the spirit and not according to our flesh. Remember, that's a decision that every day we, we have to make that decision. Who's going to rule my life today? Is it going to be my, my fallen flesh or is it going to be the Holy Spirit who reigns inside of me? And that's something that we're going to battle. We're going to battle the flesh until the day that we go home. So we pray for one another that uh, through all this that we'll be drawn closer to the Lord, we'll, we'll be refined to be made more uh, into the image of Jesus Christ. And then uh, we, we pray for the lost. We all have people that we know um, who don't give any indicators that Jesus is the Lord of their life. And so we want to lift them up tonight as we pray together corporately. So with these requests, um, let's, let's give these requests to the Lord. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the amazing and awesome God that you are. Lord, I thank you so much that you are a merciful and gracious and you are a good God. Lord, we thank you tonight as your people that you don't give us what we deserve, but because you, you're a loving and gracious and merciful God, you give us what we don't deserve. 
And through Christ, we have forgiveness and we have hope. And Lord, we thank you that you are so patient uh, with us as we all um, struggle in, in many ways, uh, Lord. But we thank you that our security is in Christ and your righteousness that we have received by faith. And Lord, tonight we want to lift up all these requests that have been mentioned uh, tonight. I, I pray uh, specifically for Miss Gwen Hurley. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for how far you have uh, brought her. Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to bring healing to her and for Mr. Buster. Lord, also want to pray for Miss Linda all day. I failed to mention her, but uh, Lord, we, we pray for her and her recovery as she's still in the hospital. Pray for Brother Mike uh, tonight. Lord, pray that the doctors would have wisdom and that they would know exactly what's going on with, with Mike uh, and that they would know the right treatment uh, for him. And so we just pray for him physically, but also pray for him emotionally, that he would not um, get discouraged and that he would lean upon your strength. Lord, pray for Mr. Wayne Shadows and his infection and his knee. Pray for healing for him and that ultimately he'll look to you uh, for his strength and for his uh, hope. Pray for Miss Lee Scott and her cancer treatments. Brother Kevin Long and Mr. Larry Harrell as they await their needed surgeries. Um, Lord, we pray for our medical community, all of our doctors and the nurses and uh, everyone who, who just works in the medical field. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them physically and emotionally as um, this, is, this has just been such a huge burden and weight that they're facing every day. And so, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon them. We ask that you would um, please be with our leaders, starting with President Trump, down to our, our governor, Brian Kemp, all of our governors and leaders. Lord, we pray that they would lead courageously and that they would do it faithfully and they would, they would do it wisely, that you would, you would give them the direction as they lead uh, the people of this great nation. And, and we do ask for healing upon this nation. And, and with that, Lord, we trust in your perfect will and in your perfect timing. And so, Lord, we pray that you would accomplish your purpose and plan that you have through this. Lord, as a church, we ask for clear direction as, as your timing and when we should, we should slowly begin to open back up for worship. We desire that day and we look forward to that day but we want to have wisdom and we want to have discernment uh, regarding that. And um, Lord, uh, we just thank you that, that you tell us that if we ask for, for wisdom, you'll give it to us. And so Lord, may we be faithful to do that. As your children, I pray that you would draw us closer to you, that we would, we would have a even more uh, intense hunger to know you more deeper and fuller and that we would surrender any area of our lives that that we've yet to fully surrender over to you lord we we just want to be the people that you've called us uh, to be and, and lord we thank you for your amazing grace and, and lord we just ask that you would forgive us when we when we fail to be the people that you've called us to be uh, lord tonight i pray for this family of this young man uh, Zachary Mills, uh, Lord, that recently passed away. Lord, I pray that you would comfort that family. Um, Lord, I pray for others who are mourning uh, the loss of loved ones, those who are just going through difficulties and hardships. Lord, certainly people who are facing physical and financial uh, struggles, even some perhaps in our own church family that, uh, that we're not aware of. Lord, I just pray for them. Pray for your church. Pray that we will be unified um, so that you can be fully glorified uh, through your church here at First Baptist Church. And then, Lord, tonight we, we pray for the lost. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would, you would draw the lost to yourself, that through your amazing grace you would regenerate them, that you would open their eyes to their need for Jesus. And so, uh, Lord, we just we pray for them, and we pray that we would have the courage um, and the wisdom to know when you open up a door for us to personally witness to the lost. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have a word for us tonight. We pray that you would help us to focus 
and just uh, receive the message that you have for us. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for your love for us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Tonight we're going to go to back to the book of Psalms as we've been studying through the Psalms on Wednesday nights. And so tonight we're in Psalm uh, 140 is where we're going to be tonight. As uh, I've entitled tonight's study, Take Cover. Um, if I were to say, if you could respond tonight, and we were in the sanctuary, and I would ask the question, what would you say is the, is the meanest creature in the world? Maybe you would say, well, um, got to be a grizzly bear, or um, it's got to be a rattlesnake, or a water moccasin, or a great white shark, or a black widow. You might be surprised to know that according to National Geographic, they say that the meanest animal in the world is the honey badger. Honey badger lives in Africa. Um, it's not that big of an animal. In fact, um, if you've ever seen a picture of a honey badger, they, they really look pretty unintimidating. Um, look, they're furry, kind of cuddly, but apparently they are vicious uh, animals. They, they are fearless. They've been known to attack animals far bigger than themselves. Um, in fact, I was reading an article and it says that uh, honey badgers can uh, attack and kill antelope and even buffalo. And they have skin that is really, really tough, so they're hard to kill. So not only did the National Geographic say that they were the meanest animal in the world, but back in 2002, the Guinness Book of World Records labeled them as the fiercest animal in the world. But tonight in our psalm, um, the psalm tonight reminds us that the meanest creature in the world is not the honey badger, but the meanest creature in the world is us as people. In our natural state, um, we can say and we can do things to one another that are absolutely wicked and cruel. And David here is writing about a time in his life where he was facing some really wicked and uh, cruel people who were attacking him um, viciously. And uh, we don't know the, the, the exactly who these people were. We can, we can speculate. Perhaps he's, he is... Um, fleeing for his life from King Saul and his men, or maybe it was during that uh, season of his life where his own son, Absalom, and, and Absalom's fellow conspirators were after David's life. It, it really doesn't matter as far as the lesson who exactly his enemies were, but David teaches us a very, very uh, important lesson in life, uh, and that is when we're under attack, we can take cover under the shelter of the Lord, because he is our refuge and strength. So just follow along. If, if you have a copy of God's word, as I read uh, Psalm 140, the Bible says, Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their heart and stir up wars continually. They make their tongue sharp as a serpent's, and under their lips is the venom of asp. Guard me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have planned to trip up my feet. The arrogant have hidden a trap for me. And with cords they have spread a net. Beside the way they have set snares for me. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear to the voice of my pleas for mercy, O Lord. O Lord, my Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further their evil plot, or they will be exalted. As for the head of those who surround me, let the mischief of their lips overwhelm them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into fire, into miry pits, no more to rise. Let not the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil hunt down the violent 
man speedily. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and will execute justice for the needy. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. So here is David, and uh, he is facing some vicious attacks and plots from, from some evil um, men. And as I said a moment ago, um, because in our natural states, our hearts, as, as the Bible uh, tells us, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, the Bible says that the heart, um, the, the center of our being, our hearts are desperately wicked. And, and that's why ultimately we need to be saved. When we're saved, we receive a new heart. Um, and so sometimes even as saved people, we can walk according to our flesh and we can do some very fleshly things and we can we can say things to one another and we can do things to one another that are really, really uh, unkind and even vicious at times. In fact, you study in the life of David. Um, David, uh, when, when he committed the sin of, of Bathsheba, um, he, he developed a very wicked plot, a cover-up, if you will, to cover up his sin. And, and uh, the, um, Bathsheba's husband, who was, who was innocent, David plotted uh, to have him killed. Um, so, so as people, we can do some really mean things, but we also know as God's people, there's times where we've been in a spot like David where we've been under some kind of attack and our name is being, or our, our name and our reputation is um, being attacked and, and maybe we're being treated very unfairly. Um, it's, it, it's a painful place to be, but it's also a, a frightful uh, place to be when you know that somebody is plotting um, against you. So tonight, what David does here in this, this short psalm is he, is he gives us some lessons for how when we're under attack, how that we can take cover in the Lord and we can, we can take shelter in the Lord, when when attack comes, uh, by by reminding, by resting in four comforting truths. So the first truth that we always need to remember when we are being attacked is uh, first of all that God allows my hurts. God allows uh, my hurts. Now I'm not going to go back through these verses, but David describes some of the things that these evil men were doing against him. He says that they were first, they were, uh, they were slandering him. In fact, verse three says, they make their tongue sharp as a serpent's and under their lips is the venom of asp. So they were using their mouths to, to bring hurt into David's life. They were spreading lies about him. They were slandering his, um, his name. You know, slander always comes first. When, when somebody's got an agenda against somebody else, when they want to hurt somebody else, oftentimes the, the first thing that they will do is, is that they will slander that individual. Um, they'll do that in order to build their case so that they can pull other people in onto uh, their side so that others will, will join in their attack against whoever it is they're attacking. And that's what was happening uh, with David. These individuals were slandering him and they were building up their army uh, against uh, David. He says not only were they slandering him, but they were plotting, they were scheming, they were, they were planning, they were setting traps, they were setting up nets in order to, to, to um, trap uh, David. So when we're in these times, again, probably not going to face something like this, but when we're in those moments where, for whatever reason, somebody is uh, attacking us and, and we find out that they're going around, they're talking bad about us, they're attacking our reputation, they're plotting uh, against us, what's the first thing that we need to do? Well, we need to first acknowledge a very important truth, and that is we have to acknowledge that ultimately God allows our hurts. He allows these things to happen uh, in our lives. Now, we know that God is not the author of evil. 
But because God is the all-knowing, all-wise, all-sovereign God that he is, for whatever reason, God allows evil to happen in the world. Uh, we know this because as soon as, um, as we see Satan rebelling against God, God, for whatever reason, didn't immediately um, send Satan to hell and imprison him for eternity. But for, for uh, a reason that only God knows, he has allowed Satan and his minions to have a season while, where they're allowed um, to propagate evil. And uh, so, so we have to acknowledge that, that God, while he's not the author of evil, he allows evil to happen in our life. He allows Satan and the demons of hell sometimes to harass us, and he allows wicked people to do things against us. Now, there's a couple places in Scripture that uh, speak of this. First, if you go to the uh, book of Revelation, Revelation 13, in the end, um, we see that um, there is authority given to the beast. It says, Revelation 13, 5, And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. Let's get down to verse 7. Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them, and authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. So you hear that word, the beast was allowed. So for whatever reason, God gives it in the future, the beast, this authority to do these um, things. Then in the gospel, uh, the gospel of Luke, the Lord says to Peter, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your, your brethren. So you hear that. Jesus says, Peter, Satan has asked, he has asked for permission to sift you like uh, wheat. So, so while the Lord allows evil, he allows hurt in our lives, it is only allowed under the, the tight control and supervision of, of the Lord because he has a purpose and a plan that he's going to accomplish even through the hurts in our life. So as painful and as fearful as it can be when you are being maliciously attacked, when somebody at your place of employment uh, employment is, is doing things to purposely try to set you up to keep you from getting a promotion, or maybe they're even after your job, um, as, as uncomfortable as that is, in those times, we can rest knowing that for whatever reason, God is allowing it because he's going to use it for some kind of good. And we may not we may not even see that on this side of eternity. But one day, uh, we'll be able to look back and we'll have one of those aha moments where we can look back and say, now I know why God allowed that to happen in my life. In the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, uh, you have the story of Joseph and how his brothers sold him into, uh, into uh, slavery and uh, how Joseph ultimately ends up being um, thrown into to prison for a crime he did not commit. But it was, it was, all that was allowed, that hurt was allowed in Joseph's life because God had a plan. He was going to, he was going to use all that in order to elevate, in the end, Joseph to become the prime minister, basically under Pharaoh, so that Joseph could provide food for the people of God. And so Genesis 50, verse 20, the Bible says, What men intend for evil, God uses for good. So you can, you can claim that promise, that you know that when, when somebody is maliciously attacking you, that uh, somehow God's going to use it to accomplish some kind of, of good through it. So number one, we know that God allows my hurt. Number two, when you are facing uh, an attack from an individual, again, we're all going to have these times. We all can relate to this. When we're in those difficult times, there's a second reminder, and that is that God hears my cries. God hears my cries. 
The truth is, is that God hears his children when they cry to him. Last week, we were in Psalm 139. We talked about several theological truths about God. And, and the one is, is that God is omniscient. He knows everything about us, and he's omnipresent. So that wherever we're at, God is there with us. So God knows the hurt that we are facing when we're being attacked maliciously. And he hears us when we uh, cry to him. Now, in verses 6 through 8, look at verse 6. It says, I said to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear to the voice of my pleas for mercy, O Lord. And then he continues on through verse 8. And he's just crying out uh, to the Lord. Time and time again, we see this as a pattern in the life of David. Whenever David faced some kind of difficulty or some kind of danger, so often his first reaction was he cried to the Lord first. He went to the Lord. He told the Lord about it. Not that God had to be informed. God already knew, but he goes to the Lord as his uh, source of comfort. Psalm 55, verse 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. So when you find yourself being maliciously attacked and, and, you, and you sense that fear is beginning to creep up inside of you, cry out to the Lord. Let your first response uh, be to cry to the Lord. Now, this is important uh, because so often when, when as Christians we're being maliciously attacked, whether it's from an unbeliever or sometimes even another believer, our first response is not to cry to the Lord. But there's a temptation that the first thing we're going to do is going to pick up the phone and we're going to start calling all of our friends and we're going to start telling all of our friends about it in order to build up our own defense, to somehow uh, avenge our, ourselves. But we have to be very, very careful with that. Uh, the first thing we need to do is cry out to the Lord. Now, certainly, um, when you are under a season where you're being attacked, um, is, it, is it ever wrong to call another brother or sister who you trust or are walking close to the Lord? Is it ever wrong to, to tell them about your situation so that they can be praying for you? Absolutely not. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, you may even want to call another um, brother or sister who... Again, they, they give evidence that they're, they're uh, walking close to the Lord and they have wisdom in their life. And so you may call them to seek some wisdom and counsel. There, there's wisdom in doing that. But we have to be very careful that we, we don't do what uh, our enemies are doing against us. And that is we, we have that temptation that when we're being slandered, well, we'll just pick up the phone and we'll start slandering them. Again, instead of crying out to our friends, we need to cry out to the Lord in prayer. Again, he knows exactly where we're at. He hears our cries. He hears the cries of his, of his children. Well, number three, a third reminder that will help us to take shelter under the hand of the Lord when we face attack is this third reminder, and that is God defends my cause. So, uh, God allows my hurt. God hears my cries. Number three, we know by faith, God defends my cause. Um, in this psalm, you have David. He starts out, he's crying out to the Lord. He's laying it out before the Lord. He's finding peace in that. He's crying out to the Lord, but then we see confidence. David was absolutely uh, confident that uh, the Lord would defend his call, uh, cause. We see this in verse um, 12. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and will execute justice for the needy. So in this verse, who is the afflicted? Well, it's David. He, he, has, he has this confidence. He, knows, he says, I know, no, excuse me, that the Lord will defend me. He is going to defend me. How did David have that confidence? Because this was not David's first rodeo. Uh, he had been through this um, before. So, so he is saying, I know that the Lord is going to defend my cause. He is going to defend me. God will always take the side of the righteous. 
He's going to take the, the, the side of his, of his children, those who belong to him. He's, he's going to defend um, the innocent. So, so David could say, he will defend my cause because my cause is ultimately his cause. As the king, it was his, it was his purpose to, to defend the, the innocent, to, to execute justice for the needy. And so he says, God, I know that you're going to do that for me because I know that your cause is ultimately my cause. And, and you know, the thing about it is, is when we're walking in the middle of God's will, when we're doing exactly what God has called us to do, when we are fulfilling his purpose in our life, there is nothing that can come against that. Um, no scheme of the devil, no scheme of wicked men can prevent that from happening. And, and David here, he knows that. And so he says, I, I know that, that God is going to defend me. And verses 9 through 11, he ultimately says, God, I know that you're going to, you're going to uh, avenge me as well. Notice what he says, verse 9, as he's crying out to the Lord, he says, As for the head of those who surround me, let the mischief, mischief of their lips overwhelm them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into fire, into miry pits, no more to rise. Then verse 11, let not the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil hunt down the violent man speedily. So, so ultimately he's saying, Lord, I'm asking for you to avenge me. Bring me, bring me justice. And, and that's another important lesson is to remember that when we're being maliciously attacked, when we, when, when we are walking closely to the Lord and we're not doing anything wrong, and then we find ourselves being slandered, attacked, um, there is the temptation to try to avenge ourselves, um, to fight back, to get even. But we're reminded in God's word that we trust in God's vengeance on our behalf, that he will avenge us in his timing and in his way. And that gives us uh, comfort. God's not going to let any injustice get by. He will deal with it in his time. And so David says with confidence, God defends my cause. And we can say that uh, too. The truth is, is that sometimes you hear people say, God helps those who help themselves. That You'll never find that in the Bible, but you find just the opposite. God helps those who cannot defend themselves, those who cannot help themselves. David is in a situation, there was nothing he could do to help himself in this situation. He could not stop these people from talking bad about him. He could not stop these people from secretly plotting against him. But he could trust that God would defend him and avenge him. And that's the same for us as well. You know what the reality is? You, you can't stop people from talking badly behind your back. You, you can't stop somebody from just up the side and they want to try to ruin your reputation. Um, but you can trust that God will defend you. God defends the innocent. He defends his, his children. And yes, he will avenge us in his way and in his timing. Well, number four, the fourth and final reminder that will help us to find shelter and comfort in, in, as we're facing danger. And that is this truth. God delivers my soul. God delivers my soul. We get this from verses 12 through 13. Again, another word of confidence that David states here. I know, you hear that? I know. David doesn't say, I hope, but he says, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and will execute justice for the needy. And then verse 13, surely, again, that's like saying, I know the righteous shall give thanks to your name the upright shall dwell in your presence. So David there is, is saying, I know that God ultimately will deliver my soul. And he, he's crying out to the Lord, but he's crying with confidence. And he reminds us in verse 13 of our hope. This was the hope that David clung to. And that hope was is that he knew that ultimately he's going to dwell in the presence of the Lord. And that's our hope. We, we know that, that no matter what situation we're facing, whether it's this that we're going through right now or one of those difficult times when you're being attacked, 
we know that God dwells with us. But ultimately, one day, and I believe that this is what David is alluding to here, one day God is going to deliver us from ever out of this present world of evil and wickedness. He's going to take us out of this world. He's going to usher us into his eternal presence where we will forever um, be away from the presence of sin and evil and we will be in his glorious presence uh, forever. That was David's anchor that he clung to. Why could David cling to that anchor? Because he knew that he was a child of God. And that can be our anchor as well. Um, this psalm here is just yet another great reminder of the many blessings of belonging to the Lord by having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If by faith we've trusted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we've trusted in his uh, death and his resurrection on our behalf, we know that we belong to the Lord, that we are his, his child, and that he will defend us no matter what evil plots may come against us, no matter what happens in our life, we know we belong to him and that we can find shelter in his everlasting arms. So I hope, child of God, that this brings comfort to you. Um, you say, well, I'm not being attacked. I'm, you know, right now there's peace in my life. Well, put this in your back pocket uh, because for those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, we will be persecuted. We will be hated. And so just remember this when that time comes. Cling to this, this uh, psalm so that we not react according to our flesh, but according to the Spirit. And so that we can, uh, even in the midst of difficulty like being attacked, we can uh, give glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, if you're not sure that you've been saved, that your sins are forgiven, that you have a home in heaven, you can, you can before you go to bed tonight, you can know for sure. By, by faith, just acknowledging your sins, acknowledging you've sinned against God, but believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He died in your place, and he rose again on the third day. For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, don't put it off. We don't know what another day holds. Give your life to Jesus Christ and begin to experience the comforts and the blessings, like David, of being a child of God. Well, thank you again for joining us. Hope you have a, a, a wonderful rest of the evening. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back Sunday morning at 11 o'clock via Facebook Live. Again, pray. Continue to pray. Pray for one another. Continue to minister to one another. God bless you. We will see you on Sunday morning.